Premiere Pro Basics for Adobe Premiere Pro 2021. In this video, I'll show you how to get started with this video editing program for complete beginners. I'll show you just the actual basics of editing to get you going. In fact, I'm going to miss out an awful lot of features, but I don't want to confuse you if you've never started this program before. Afterwards, if you'd like to learn more about the very many features to make your videos look really professional in both sound and vision, then please check out our comprehensive Premiere Pro course at voiceovermasterclass.com. Now, before we open up the software, I need to give you a little bit of background about how a video editing program works because it's very different from, say, an audio editing program which uses a destructive method of editing. Now, video editing in Premiere Pro is non-destructive, and it's really important to know the difference. Let me explain. Now, in the old days when we only had film cameras, as well as not being able to have instant playback and limited time to film on each camera roll, the film had to be processed and then the negative or positive film footage was physically cut up using a Steenbeck machine or similar and stuck together with tape or glue. Not only did it take ages, but once the cuts were made, it was really hard to put things in a different order again. And if you only had one positive version of the film, you had to cope with nasty glue and tape with previous edits, ruining the look of your projected film. Today, our analog world is captured by digital cameras and the pictures, sound and the locations of specific shots in a recorded video file are recorded as numbers. This means that a digital editing system like Premiere Pro just needs the file names you want to edit and the time codes of locations in those files you want to use to create the illusion of a completed video with shots taken from often many different files and sources. The great advantage of this is that the original files are never tampered with in any way, unlike the days of film where you physically had to cut the film, and even in the early days of videotape, which also had to be cut very carefully with a razor blade. So what does this mean for you? It means that because digital video editing is a non-destructive system, you can edit away with impunity, make any changes you like to the order, add effects, transitions, do what you like. The original source files are not changed in any way, and you can start again if you like with another project using exactly the same source material. So let me show you around the software, and I am ignoring an awful lot of things here. I assume you've shot material, you've got various files, you just need to put them together in the right order and to export a video. Here we go. So when you start up Premiere Pro after the splash screen, you get to this. Now, here I've got a list of various things that I've done in the past, but you won't have this. It'll be blank when you first started. So go to New Project in the top left-hand corner. Just call it something and just keep all the settings as Premiere Pro thinks should be right for you at this point. And click OK. So when you open up Premiere Pro 2021, it looks pretty dark and gloomy and uninviting, but helpfully it says import media to start, but you actually don't really want to start there until you're absolutely sure your windows on your computer look the same as this. So you need first to go to Window, Workspaces. Now here you'll see a whole lot of things, uh, and also there's the new caption section for this year, there's color correction, there's effects, graphics, and a learning section as well. But you want editing, that's what we're doing, basic editing. Ignore editing CS 5.5, which is for old timers who liked the way the windows were configured in the old days. You want the new editing one, and then it'll look the same as mine. So just click that, and it should look like this. So, import media to start, that's okay. If this blue line is not around this section, well look, you can click any section you want, but make sure this is lit up or else it won't import the media. So, let's go back to import media to start. But even now, before we import media, we really need to create a couple of boxes here to make things neat. File, new, bin. You don't want to get clips all over the place. And we'll call this one Katie. And we'll call this one Katie, she's the presenter, and we know that her clips will go in there. Then, with this still highlight, we create another box, File New Bin, and we'll call this Cutaways. A cutaway is an illustrative shot, basically, so that's all we're going to do here. 
two bins. This is for the presenter. This is for the illustrative shots. So with the Katie bin highlight, we're going to import just one clip for now. File, import, highlight, open. And now there we go. We won't bother about the cutaways for the time being because we need to create a sequence. We can't play that at the moment. Although, saying that, if you look down here, you'll see this is lit up. If I put it into icon view and then double click the Katie, this is her clip. And you can actually scroll through it to make sure you've got the right clip selected. But for now, I'm going to go back to the normal list view. Fine, so you've imported your shot files into Adobe Premiere Pro. So how do you put them in the right order and add things like captions and overlay shots and all that stuff? You need to create a sequence. This is the, like the timeline that you move things around on. Now, you will start your own custom sequences in the future when you get more advanced. But for now, here's how to automatically create a sequence that Premiere Pro thinks is right for the type of footage that you've imported. So this one helpfully says drop media here to create sequence, which you can do. And that's what I suggest you do if you start out. When you get more advanced, you would want to start a new sequence up here, File, New, Sequence, and then you get this dialog box, which has all sorts of maybe complicated things if you're starting out, different types of cameras, different types of codecs, and different types of frame rates, and progressive and interlaced, which can get pretty confusing unless you know what you're doing. Although I do explain this in the course at voiceovermasterclass.com. But we'll just cancel that for now. But we're going to drag this file into this and let go, and it automatically creates a sequence. And here we can just click and then drag across and just see everything that's in this file. If we want to know what Premiere Pro has automatically selected for us, you go to Sequence, Sequence Settings, and that tells you what it is if you need that. But don't worry about that for now. We're just hacking stuff together. Now, I'm going to get rid of stuff we don't want and just create a new video about Heinrich's Law, which is a health and safety film. So I just play it by pushing the space bar. One major finding became known as Heinrich's Law. Oh, we're there. Now, if I wanted to zoom in so I can click exactly where to cut this, I just push the plus. There are other ways of doing it with your scroll wheel as well, but on the plus on the keyboard, that gets you into it. And we can scrub backwards and forwards. So we know at the end of that bit, as soon as the shot changes, that's where we want to cut. These are the tools down here. It always defaults to your selection tool. Little razor blade down there, or you can click C on your keyboard. Click the razor blade and click that. And then we go back to this one again, or you can push V. C and V are close on your keyboard, so they'll be used all the time when you're editing. Just highlight that and then push the delete key, and we've got rid of it. We want to start the whole sequence with this new section. So we simply put the arrow in this section, click it, right click, and then ripple delete. And now that goes back to the beginning. You see the clock here is at zero, and now it starts if I push the space bar. One major finding became known as... And that's absolutely fine. So now we want to add some cutaways to this. Now, the director was quite happy with the black and white shots at the beginning, but just after we mentioned the name Workplace, we need to go to modern color shots of a modern steelwork that we're making this film for. So let's find where that comes in. Push the spacebar again to play. One major finding became known as Heinrich's Law, that in a workplace for every... There we are. So we've got two shots in black and white. Now we need to go to a color one. So at this position here is where the first cutaway needs to go. So let's go back to our box in bottom left-hand corner, and we'll notice that bin Katie is open. Now, we don't want to create a new bin in another bin. We've already done that. You make sure that you click back to the name of the project, and this is the bin that we want to put cutaways in. Highlight it, file, import, and let's put all the cutaways in. So here, by holding Control down or Command, you can then individually select Blast, Furnace, Grinding, Hammering Metal. We've already got Katie, remember? Steelworks and another Steelworks. And then click Open. And there they are. So I think, first of all, we know this is the correct position where we want our first cutaway. So you'll know from your own shots what you want to use first. If not, you can always 
play around with it. And as we've learned, this is non-destructive. If you make a mistake, don't worry about it. The shots haven't been affected at all. You click the little purple box here, or whatever color it is, and drag it over and take it to that little blue line. And so now, if we go back and see, it should just cut in. For every incident that causes a serious... In Wonderful. We want to see some men working here. We want to cut to men working at that point. So what do we do? Well, with it highlit, you simply go to the end and you'll notice it turns to a funny red arrow. Other ways of doing it, you could cut if you wanted to, but for this tutorial, you click down on that red arrow and drag it down. Okay, so that's it. So we're back at the stuff we have to cover over. So let's go to the Steelworks one on its own, the non-aerial shot. We'll select that and grab it over here. So this time, we could either highlight it and then get the arrow from the left, or we could just push the C key, which also creates this razor blade that we could have got from there, various ways of doing it, and click. And then you highlight with the V here and delete. And then you select and drag it along. And then let's put on some more shots. So do you see what I'm doing now? I'm sure you've got the hang of this now. And that's the end of the sequence. And at the end, we put up the sound again. Let's have a look at it. For every incident that causes a serious injury, there are 29 incidents that cause minor injuries and 300 incidents that cause no injuries. This is Heinrich's triangle. Right, so that's fine. But if we wanted to have a smooth transition between them all, you would highlight all the cutaways and then push Shift and D and then automatically the default transition would be applied. Let's watch it now. Every incident that causes a serious injury, there are 29 incidents that cause minor injuries, and, and so, three... So now you see that it fades between it because the default transition that you get with Premiere Pro, and you can change that if you want, is a fade. And that fade happens to be, I think it's 12 frames, but you can find out by clicking on any of them. So it's highlight in white there, and then you go to this panel, which we haven't actually used yet. It's the source panel. Go to effect controls. Oh no, it's one second, there we go. But you can change that if you wanted to. Make that as long or as short as you like. And you can change the defaults for this in the all important edit preferences. And down here, you've got everything you need. Um, I won't go through it all now, but there are lots of default changes you can make in there. What happens if we want a caption over here? There are loads of different things you can do for captions and even animated ones as well. The simplest thing to do if you just want a simple caption over the top is to click the type tool and then click somewhere on the picture here in the program and then start typing. So we'll call this our steel plant or something. And it goes to the default font, which no doubt will be horrible to you and you've got your own font. So how do you change that? You highlight it there in the program monitor, and with this effects controls selected, you would simply open up where it says text there. See a little arrow there? And you see it's Minion Pro. Well, I don't want that. I want mm, Myriad Pro. Yes, but not light condensed. So basically, you would make a change there, and then you would get back to the selection tool and move it around however you want. And if you wanted it for the duration of those cutaways, just move it however you want. And with it highlighted, the old trick of Shift plus D makes it fade in and fade out. Great. So say you now you've got all your shots in the right order, you just need to export it. In our training course on Premiere Pro, this is a whole chapter on its own, and it can get very confusing if you've not used the program before. But let me try and make it simple for you. So with exporting, first of all, you may be playing around with effects here. Nothing will work because you've got to have this box highlight with the blue area behind. If you've got this work area bar, make sure the blue is at the beginning and the blue is at the end there because you can move this around. You could only export, say, the middle bit if you wanted to, simply by dragging the beginning to there and just find I want it to export from there to there only. But if you want the whole clip, make sure the work area bar covers the whole of the video you want. If you can't see the work area bar, simply go to the hamburger menu there, click that, and make sure work area bar is on. 
exporting can be extremely confusing, but all you've got to know for now, if you just want to get something out fast, is to make sure the audio levels are OK. And you do that again by making sure the clip you want to change the audio is here, and the audios are here in effects controls. If the audio is only on the left or only on the right, that's basically because you have recorded in stereo on your camera and you've only put the microphone in on the left or the right. So that's where you need to go into your effects controls. If you move that along, you'll find effects here. You can, if you want, move it into a different area. It doesn't really matter. But if you put in here fill, you'll see that there are fill left with right and fill right with left. Now here, it happens to be mono. Left and right are fine, no problem whatsoever. But if you find you've got audio on the left and you need to be on the right as well, then it's fill right with left. You just highlight that and drag it over here. Or the other way around, you use the other one. Now you'll notice that this box has been highlit because I was playing around with effects to show you. Nothing will export now. No, you've got to make sure that this box is highlit there. And now you go File, Export, and then File, Export Media. I know lots of other confusing things. Don't worry about it for now. File, Export Media. Now, you'll see it does some weird stuff. What's all this about? You may find that it has defaulted to a video codec of DV Pow. Where are we, the 90s, you know? Format AVI? Please, this is rather old. But your software, even if it's the latest version, may default to this because it's sort of baked into it. But don't worry, you've only got to do this once. And then next time you come back to it, it will come back to your favorite exporting option. Format, you go down to H264. Not Blu-ray, please remember them. H264 is a very good codec, and it's a way of encoding the video so that it can give you the best quality at the lowest file size. And helpfully, it says match source high bitrate, and it will give you a standard HD output, assuming that your footage that you've brought in is HD. And you click on here to change the title and also to select where on your computer you want it to export to. Export video, yes. Export audio, yes. It'll just automatically give you the best quality. There are two main buttons down here you need to know about. If you want to continue using Premiere Pro, then you need to click Q. And that opens Adobe Media Encoder, which comes wrapped up with Premiere Pro. You don't need to download it separately. And then that'll simply open up. You click Go, and it will just queue in the background. But if you don't want to use Premiere Pro again for the export time, you simply click Export, and it does its job. Thank you very much for watching. Video editing has become more and more important for more and more people. In this age of digital media, creating professional-looking videos fast has become essential. And maybe you've decided now is the time to start learning how to edit yourself so you can be more in control. It means you don't need to pay somebody else or a production company to do it all for you. If you're a voiceover artist or an audio producer who doesn't know how to edit video yet, you're leaving a lot of money on the table as integrating voiceovers into existing videos can be a big money spinner these days. Video editing also can be creative and fun as well. Now, if you'd like to learn more about the very many features to make your videos look very professional in sound and vision, check out our comprehensive and easy to learn Premiere Pro course at voiceovermasterclass.com. We cover putting shots into order, adding cutaways, green screen captions, animated graphics, shortcuts, color correction, blurring moving objects, even subtitles, multi-camera editing, dubbing, much, much more. You'll, of course, have files to download. You can follow me over my shoulder as we go through three projects together, from very basic to quite complicated. There are also sections on filmmaking as well, as a good edit is only as good as the quality of the footage to start with. Have a good day, and thank you very much for watching.